my creative critters and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah and this week's video is part two of my adventure drawing at the zoo. So let's get right into it. So at the zoo as well they did have an exhibit of a couple of peafowl and peafowl is the general word for peacocks and peahens. There was a male there that I enjoyed drawing the most I believe because it had such gorgeous rich blue colors and everything. I didn't have time to sketch in color plus it was pretty hot there was not a lot of shade around their exhibit but I was able to capture a quick gesture sketch of how their necks bend and how big their plumage is and everything. So there are a couple sketches of the male mostly. And I believe maybe I got a different one because in another exhibit, give me one sec. Never mind. I thought I had a couple more sketches because there was another peacock in the farm animal exhibit as well. But that one was pretty hidden. It kind of went underneath like, oops, it's like play area like chicken coop thing because just to get out of the sun really so I couldn't see that one very well and I didn't spend a lot of time drawing chickens but there was another peacock in that exhibit as well but I think I just stuck to where I could see them better to make these sketches here so I'm kind of jumping all over the place but I want to talk about the turkey vulture real quick so this guy was in the exhibit along with the bald eagles and I just want to go over a couple facts with him because I found it pretty interesting um so on the sign that was by the turkey vulture which by the way I was not able to get a very good photo slash video of this guy. He was kind of, or she, I don't really remember... Um, I think his name is Jumanji, so I'm assuming it's a guy, uh, a male turkey vulture, but he was hidden pretty well into like this, I think it was like a hut situation, and he was kind of just poking his head out, so this is literally all I could see. Plus there was like layers of fencing, so again, it was pretty hard to see him very well, but turkey vultures are found in North and South America, actually. They are found in a variety of habitats, from deserts to savannas and grasslands to tropical forests, so you can really find them in a lot of different environments. They weigh up to six pounds and their wingspan is 72 inches, and they can live up to 20 years. And I believe Jumanji was injured as well, which I explained before, uh, so he's not able to fly, but it's nice that he has a nice area at the zoo to be taken care of for the rest of his life and this turkey vulture eats primarily carrion which is literally dead animals so like a vulture you would think they eat dead animals they find on the ground or on the side of the road or whatever they gravitate towards corpses so that's nice <laughs> kind of speed up the decay process and get some meals at the same time Another fact that I found that was interesting on the sign for about turkey vultures is that turkey vultures are one of the few birds of prey that are actually pretty good at smelling. They have a really good sense of smell and they actually use it to detect carcasses in the area. Turkey vultures are pretty poor hunters and rarely take live prey, which is probably why they just take any leftovers of dead animals that they find. Something else is that a group of turkey vultures is called a venue or a kettle when they're circling around a carcass. So if you see a bunch of vultures, that is a venue of vultures or a kettle. When you see them like in the sky circling around, it's like a kettle of vultures. <laughs> Thought that was pretty interesting, I didn't know that. So the last animal on this page that I drew is an African spurred tortoise. And his name was Franklin. I thought that was super cute, like Franklin the turtle from that old show, that little cartoon that I used to watch when I was growing up. But his name is Franklin. He was really active when I was there. He was doing a lot of walking around. I'll be sure to pop up some images here and some videos that I took of him just walking around. He was super cute. And he got pretty close to the edge of the exhibit. So I was able to get him, like be able to see him pretty close to me, which is nice to see those little details. But again, it was pretty hard to draw because he was moving around a lot. So his foot, I was kind of trying to guess after he already moved where the feet went and everything. But I did notice a lot of pyramiding on the shell itself. And like I said, I'll show an image or a video of him so you'll be able to see what I mean. But I have um, talked about pyramiding in turtles and I'm not sure exactly which video, but I will pop a link or a card here so you can check out that video. Maybe it was one of my Fun Fact Fridays, I'm not really sure, but I did talk about pyramiding and how it is potentially harmful to turtles and I share a lot more facts about that. And now that I think about it, it might be my Fruitles video where I turned fruits into turtles. So be sure to check out those videos. I'll have it linked in the description and like I said, I'll have a card here too. Some interesting facts about the African spurred tortoise is they are found in Northern Africa from the southern border of the Sahara Desert to the east of the Red Sea. And they weigh up to 200 pounds. So this guy was pretty 
big. Um, 200 pounds is quite a lot. He's pretty dense, I'm assuming, with the shell. It's pretty heavy. They live to be over 50 years old, and they're primarily herbivores. They eat grasses and leaves and wildflowers, but I think in the exhibit I saw all kinds of like dried goodies in there as well. So he is definitely living his best life. And these guys are also called Selkatas, which I believe I also talked about in my Frutals videos. But they're very strong animals and are even known to push large rocks around their enclosures and even remove wooden fences. And these Selkatas do not hibernate as other tortoises do. And they're generally solitary in the wild. So you won't see very many in one area. And since this zoo is pretty small, I was able to get around the whole zoo a couple times to get some additional sketching. And by the second time I went around, he was actually sunbathing in this like little pond area, which I thought was really cute. So I was able to get a pretty detailed sketch because he was pretty stationary. He did move his head around a lot, so that was a little bit more challenging. But for the most part with his shell and everything, I was able to get a pretty detailed sketch which I was pretty happy about. So I'll show you that one. So this was the sketch that I did of Franklin just chilling in like a little body of water. I think it was more like a pond really. It was not very deep. Uh, he was kind of laying in it and it only came up to like, you know, here probably. So it was pretty shallow, but he was kind of just sunbathing, enjoying the cool water, I'm sure. And he had his head up most of the time, so I was able to get it in this pose. But he did move his head around quite a bit, so I kind of had to wait for him to either get close enough into that pose again for me to continue drawing it. But I was really able to focus on the shell a lot because obviously his shell didn't move very much. So I was able to get these pyramiding sketches down and kind of study the ripples, I guess, like on the different forms here. And I thought it was pretty interesting. And turtles in general and tortoises especially are pretty interesting to me because not only do they have these really unique shells, but their legs as well have like these spurs and like scales that stick out a little bit. It's pretty interesting. I wasn't able to see it super well because he was a little bit far away, but I just always remember that about tortoises and I thought it was pretty interesting. And just seeing them walk and stuff, seeing Franklin like do his little waddling kind of, it was so cute seeing his shell go up and down and everything like that. So I'll definitely insert some clips of him walking around so yeah that's Franklin so next I went into the reptile house and this is where they had a whole bunch of different reptiles obviously and the first one that I saw there was the inland bearded dragon and this guy was pretty still literally the whole time I was watching him so I was able to really get in there and study his little fingers and all the little spikes and everything on him and I just love these lizards they're just so fascinating to me and they're like little dinosaurs you know and I don't think I took a video of him if I did it might as well be a photo because he was pretty still. Um, I did walk around the exhibit or the reptile house a little bit and then when I went back to him he was switching in positions a little bit. So I was able to get a different view of him for some reference photos that I could use in the future which was nice. But I just love his little fingers. They're so like his nails are really long, little claws and I just enjoyed the textures. I didn't get his full body obviously. Um, I wanted to mostly just focus on the planes of his face and how like I don't know this area is pretty flat and how he had like these little spikes here and there, like a little stubble or something. So he was pretty interesting to draw. And plus it wasn't really crowded around his little exhibit, so not a lot of people were there. So I was able to stand there for a little bit longer to study him, so that was nice. There was also like a tank of this spotted gar with all kinds of little tiny fish flying around him. Not flying. Oh my gosh, swimming around him. There were a lot of little tiny fish. And this guy was literally just in the corner the whole time. Didn't move very much. So I was able to kind of quickly get him down. It was a really long fish. I wasn't able to fit him the whole thing, you know, on my sketchbook um, to stay in proportion. But he did have some like interesting fins and tail also, but obviously couldn't fit him. I was really interested in how the scales kind of looked like spirals kind of going down his body in the way that they were placed. I wasn't able to stay there very, very very long and study him like most of the exhibits I wasn't able to stand in one spot and really study them very hard because there were a lot of kids that wanted to see the exhibits so I kind of was just doing a quick sketch moving out of the way quick sketch again moving out of the way because there's a lot of kids and lots of action there at the zoo so I didn't want to take away from anybody enjoying the animals like I was so yeah this was the spotted gar and then in a couple other little exhibits there was a I forget what the name was I think it was like a red red snake or something it was a tiny no, maybe not, maybe not this one. It was, I forget what it was called, but it was a tiny little snake. His head was probably, this was probably life-size to be honest. It was very small. Um, he was kind of peeking his head under or like through this like log thing. 
I don't know how I explain it, like a little tunnel thing for shelter. I think it was like a log really, like a hollow log. He was just poking his head out. So I took a little bit of time and drew him in here. Again, the thing with pen is like, you can't erase it. So <laughs> whatever you put down, that's kind of what's there and you can kind of work through it a lot. But for example, um, next to the um, bearded dragons, there was this big area and I'll definitely throw some uh, videos here of this guy. Um, there was a little little exhibit I guess. It was mostly like a watered exhibit. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. You'll see in the video but there were a ton of turtles just swimming around and when turtles are swimming around they move very quickly and there was a ton of them in there so I tried to like sketch a little drawing of his face but like I said their heads kept moving around and they're you know flipping kept moving because obviously they're swimming so I wasn't able to get that down it looks really awkward and kind of creepy honestly but that was kind of what I was able to get while they were all moving there was a ton of them in there I tried to focus a little bit on the shells too but like I said the shells also kept moving around and stuff so I kind of just quickly slopped that down just to get the idea that this is a turtle so that was really challenging I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what was up with this face and uh, he, they had like such pointy noses kind of but like I don't know it was just very confusing especially when you're trying to draw something and they're all moving a lot so it's hard to capture that in one single drawing while also trying to get some details as well so that was quite a challenge and I did try again after I went through the reptile house again to try and get a little better of a sketch let me see if I can find it Oh yeah, so this one, um, by the second time I went around the reptile house, this guy was just like sunbathing. I think I took a photo of it or a video, I'm not sure. But there was like this area that they could just sit on this like slab of rock or something with some, some lamps on top of it so they could cool, not cool off, like warm up from the water. Um, because reptiles really rely on their environment to keep their body temperature consistent. Um, so this guy was kind of hanging out. I was able to really study the shell more than anything because this guy was moving his head up and down a bunch. So I kind of just scribbled his face on there. It's kind of scary, but whatever. <laughs> but I was able to kind of fo focus on the shell. It was a little bit far away, so I couldn't see extreme detail. Plus, again, I was moving out of the way a lot so kids could see the turtles because who doesn't love seeing turtles? So I was kind of, you know, stepping in, um, drawing a little bit and then getting out of the way for some kids to see and everything because it was a pretty small exhibit. Um, but I was able to get those claws in there a little bit better proportion than the last time I tried because this guy wasn't swimming so that was helpful. Um, but yeah, so there's a little extra doodle that I did the second time around the reptile house. And I think this was another attempt at trying to get the little snake as well that I drew before. I think it was the same snake. I'm not sure. It would be helpful if I, you know, labeled them. But I was a little bit on the go, so I didn't have time to do all that, but... And there were no information cards for these guys or any of the reptiles, really. It was kind of just labels like, oh, this animal's in here, and that was it. There wasn't a little, like, information card or anything like that, so... I don't have a lot of information on these guys, apart from this is a turtle and this is some kind of a snake, so... Uh, moving on to the rest... So back on this page with the spotted gar and all that, I did draw a pretty nice sketch of this iguana. This exhibit was kind of in a little hallway area, so it was really hard to stand in front of this exhibit without having to move out of the way a bunch because there was a little bit of a narrow way to get through. So I did as best as I could with getting this sketch in. His name was Iggy, I believe. I'm not sure if it was a girl or boy, but I'm pretty sure it was a boy. Um, I did get some cute videos of him like trying to bob his head. Of course, while I was trying to get footage of that, he stopped bobbing his head, but I thought that was really interesting. They had like, I don't know, sheets like thing of like leather or whatever their skin, I guess scaly material. It looked like a piece of fabric like textured fabric that was kind of just hanging off here like a turkey gobble thing you know what I mean I don't know what I'm saying but <laughs> I'm not sure what the exact term is but I think it was like it's shedding or something I'm not really sure but they had like this beard almost that when it bobbed its head it kind of moved around it was kind of funny it was like flapping around and I really enjoyed looking at and um, really studying the like spikes that the iguana has. Again, I didn't have a lot of time to stay in one spot and like really, really study it because 
obviously the kids wanted to see and I had to move out of the way quite a bit because it was a little bit of a narrow area but this was an iguana that was really excited to see this guy was pretty still as well um apart from switching positions and posing once in a while but uh yeah he was fun to draw and really fun to look at he was kind of interesting he had like a little blip uh with his tongue and I thought that was really cute uh, he kind of had his tongue sticking out just a little bit like a little little blip Anyway, so that's part two of my adventure drawing at the zoo. Here's some extra clips that I shared in part one, and if you haven't seen that part, you totally should. I talk about even more animals and sketch them. Next week is the finale of my trip there with the rest of the animals that I saw and sketches I made, along with my final thoughts on the whole experience. I really hope you guys enjoyed learning about the animals and coming along on my adventure to the zoo. If you did like this video, please don't forget to leave it a like and subscribe for more art and animal related content. I upload a new video here every Friday and I would love to have you become a creative critter with me and follow along on my YouTube journey. If you made it this far, please leave me a comment and tell me what your favorite animals are to see at the zoo or what's your favorite memory at the zoo that you can remember. My favorite memory was when I was really little and there was a polar bear on her back floating on the water and her cub just jumped on her belly into the water and then climbed right out of the water again and jumped on her again and again and it was just so wholesome and you could tell the mother was just so annoyed but she tolerated it and it was so so cute. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay creative and I'll see you next Friday's video.